This show is a proud member of the Nerdy Legion Podcast Network. Get more at nerdylegion.com. Enjoy the show. This is Bright Side Home Theater. Hey, home theater nerds, welcome to the Bright Side Home Theater Podcast, the podcast that's all about the experiences we have in our theaters, the sights, the sounds, the scenes, all the fun, and we got a lot of fun this week in store for you guys. I, and I say we because I've got Jeff sitting in the green room over here waiting to come on. Uh, Jeff from HD Report, and you can find him on uh Twitter at HD Report, or you can check out his website. It's HD slash report.com. And it's just basically lets you know about what's coming out, everything, all of the streaming stuff, all of the Blu-rays, all of the 4Ks, all of the deals that are out there. Um, in our conversation, we may even, well, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to talk about. Oh, oh, the tangents we may go on. But um, this week, we're going to break down the top five 4K experiences in our theaters this week uh, from 2021 so far. Okay, so I've got five. He has five. And we haven't exchanged notes. We don't know what each other's are. We have some um, honorable mentions to start with. And um, then we'll get into our top five 4K Blu-ray experiences for the year. So let's not waste any time. Um, a little, this isn't a waste of time. Thank you to my 14 patrons. We'll start with that. And thank you to everybody on Twitter. We'll get into more of that after the conversation. But thank you for joining Twitter. Thank you for all the conversations. It's a blast over there. And I'll, I'll have more on that and what may be to come. But let's get to Jeff from HD Report and the conversation of the best 4K experiences from 2021 so far. Hey, Jeff, look at you, Mr. Cool in the gang. How you doing? Cool. <laughs> You're cool. How are you? Did I, leave, did I leave you hanging too long and you're just sitting there chilling, hanging out in the fancy bright side home theater green room? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I don't want to be recognized in your green room, dude. Yeah, exactly. A lot of stars back there waiting to waiting to come out and be interviewed. All your assistants are bugging me all the time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. How have things been? Good. It's good, been, good, it's good, been a little bit. It's been a little we, bit since we've talked. There you go. Yeah, man. We did the uh, Lord of the Rings part two towers part two. Part two. Oh, and we'll, we're going to get to the Lord of the Rings uh, Return of the King part two. We will get to that. Had... Had some issues, my friend. Had some issues. Been on a delay and trying to get things settled over here. You know how things go. Things don't always go as according to plan. You know? Never. Never. And uh, you know that very well. I contacted you. You had a little snafu on your bicycle. Oh, was it a bicycle man. or a motorcycle? A bike. Ah. I was a road, uh, road bike. Road yep. bike, huh? Yep. Was it your fault or did somebody hit you? No, nah, you know, like... Uh, it was my fault. No, I was like, I was on a hundred mile, you know, thing through Death Valley. It was like 120 degrees and this freaking tortoise was crossing the road. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You. I just, I was going through a golf course, just doing nothing. I was clipped in. I just dropped, just dropped. Sorry about that. Really? Uh, That's yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I ride an extra large bike. I'm up there high. Just psh, broke my hip. Oh, crazy. That stinks. Yeah. That and I stinks. go to PT after the surgery and everything. The first thing they do is they put me back on the bike. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to get that rotation going, get everything yeah. moving because they don't want any. Uh, they don't want that ball joint season up. <laughs> yeah. You ride, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah I had uh, a similar fall. L luckily for me, I, I found the grass on the side. I got actually got clipped by a lady. Um, she didn't like, she thought her lane wasn't right. So she came into mine and just literally put me right into the side of the road wow. and 
slid the bike and I got pinned between my wheels got pinned between her and the curb. So luckily she pushed me far enough and I landed on grass. So, but I, same thing clipped in and when your legs up against the car, you can't get out. So you just go right over, but yeah. Hey, that's, that's, I don't even, I, it's one of the things I'm really not a big fan of riding anymore as much as I used to be. I rode 20 years ago, like every day. And now I, I'm, I'm nervous driving with people with the, on their phones. You know, yeah. I've been driving down the road in my car and like, look up, look up. I'm, I'm, you're coming at me and I'm in a car. I'm petrified of somebody coming up behind me and they're looking down at their phone that you wouldn't even know on a bicycle. It's dangerous. Yeah. I mean, every, every person I've known who's ridden a motorcycle has been hit somehow or got an yeah. accident. Um, I, I used to do a lot more mountain biking at it. I got in like two crashes, but I didn't break anything major. Yeah. So I might have to go back to mountain biking. Yeah. Mountain bike. I did a lot of mountain biking myself and, uh, yeah, the crashes were a little bit more forgiving. Uh, I had a couple of close calls there as well. Landed face first into a puddle of rocks and, you know, that's when I bought my full face helmet for mountain downhill. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm getting old. And so it's, I just, I don't want to risk it. And I don't even ride my motorcycle anymore. I'm afraid if I get on it, cause I never did have an accident, knock on wood. So I know I'm, it, I'm due. So probably it just, it just takes too long to heal as you get older. Yeah. That's, that's when you get older. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but we're here to talk home theater and we're here to talk this year's so far this year's where this is kind of a prequel to what we're going to do at the end of the year. What we, we, we did last year at the end of the year for the wrap up. And, um, yeah, let's talk about, uh, the best movies so far this year, the top four. 4k releases okay. and uh that's how i'm gonna title it because i've got a little surprise for you i don't know if you yeah we'll see surprise. but um yeah surprise because it you uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk as we're going along <laughs> my my number th- i know we're doing our top five right you did you do you have a list of five you said we we went back and forth that we can yeah we can shoot off the hip from here but yeah, we, I've got about like five and I've got a few honorable mentions. I think I have six, but some of those get knocked out at the end of the year because I want to do, you know, of course. there's going to be some ones that are better that come out. So that's why I like to do a half year checkup, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's fine. Um, so let's get right to it. What do you got? What do you, what do you want to do? Let's do honorable mentions first and we'll discuss Ooh. some of those. And then okay. we'll start with our number five and see how we pair up from there. And I think I'm going to surprise you with my number three. <laughs> so. I don't have mine in order. I just. Uh, I are all. Oh. You have yours in order? Yeah, I got mine mm. all in order. And I got, you know, in order. I mean, yeah, let's have some fun. Come on. <laughs> You're organized. You're very organized. Okay. So you want to hear my first honorable mention? Yeah, let's go. So we're. Oh, now, at some point. We got to address the elephant in the room, which is streaming, right? Because some of that's these my movies... surprise. Yes. Okay. okay. Nice. So, All right. Uh, well, we it's getting there. It's yeah, getting it is. a lot closer. Uh, I have to tell you, I looked at, uh, I compared quite a few things with uh, Directv's on-demand movie platform or connection. Yeah. Where they. They um, they work. They're partners with Movies Anywhere, so if you can actually get a movie that's in your Movies Anywhere, anyway, anywhere uh, <laughs> library, and watch it on demand through Directv. And I got to tell you, the, okay. the quality is really. I can't see a difference. I mean, I was watching. I watched. I compared Alien, the first Alien yeah. movie. I could not see much of a difference at all. Um, really? Yeah. The, the, huh. I mean, I feel like okay. to me, I almost feel like these TV providers should be delivering a lot more 4K through an on-demand type of system, right? You yeah. Get the files on the server. Just shoot them out to the. Just shoot them out to your customers. You know. Yeah. And the quality is is pretty darn good. I mean, we you talked a lot about like hard drives and downloading large, you know, 200 gigabyte files. Oh yeah. Which, yeah, that'd be great. But does it's, it's possible? Time consuming. Yeah, it is. It is time consuming, but it's and that's a niche thing, and it's something that 
somebody like myself or people with a that that just want to know that they have the best possible quality, right? Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that they they're even able to produce it themselves. I just want to know, like my theater is probably a, a really good entry level home theater, right? Cause I have a entry level project 4k projector from Sony, their entry level model. I have a, I have a decent receiver, but, and you know, lower end speakers, but I, all put together, it's a good entry level system. But I still want to know, even in my case, it's not like I have like a hundred thousand dollar system. I still want to know that the content that I'm using is the best possible. And if I can, if I can get that in a download or something, and we've talked about it, I've talked about it practically with every guest about the, where we're going with streaming and stuff like that. And it's, that seems to be what it is. Cause there is a niche market, the physical media people, they typically Aside from, there's two things they want. They either want one or both, but they want the nice box, you know, the, the steel box. They want the nice collector's item, right? They collect those or, and, or they also want top quality Mm -hmm. in there. So one of these days, I think the collecting part and the top quality are going to kind of, I think we're going to lose the collecting part because people Mm. are just going to stop producing it. I really do. That's going to be sad. It will be, but what that's going to do is it's going to make everything that people are collecting now really worth some money. Oh, you, you know, everything so? that you, yeah. Yeah. Because all of a sudden everything's okay. going to be, kinda I like, think it's going to be uh, downloaded. aspirated or cars. <laughs> kind of like uh, naturally aspirated yeah. cars, right? Eventually someday we <laughs> value's going to be yeah. super high. Yeah. Something like, yeah, exactly. But it'll be a collector's well, item. Yeah. Well, I, I always thought, why not? put a high definition definition movie on a USB stick and sell it, you know, sell a little stick with like a logo on it, you know. Yeah. You know, they're, they're like 20 bucks, 30 bucks. It's the same price of a, of a disc. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You could, but then you have to have a, what kind of, what's your player, you know, and it's, you, I, I don't know the logistics of that would be completely changing the market, but you're actually kind of right there. Like why, why are we still using di- spinnable discs when you could use a, you could actually use a, a 200 gig stick. <laughs> you could, right. you could se- sell it as a, fl- as a flash, you know, a flash driver. Here you go. Here's your whole movie. But I don't know if those read as fast. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the logistics of that. And yeah. Yeah. And the, the TV would have to have a pretty good processor unless you're going to use like an Apple TV or something. And you stick the USB stick in well, there. What I, yeah. yeah. Whatever you're going to use would have to process it similar to your Blu-ray player has to process the disc. So whatever you're using, your, your stick reader would have to process the <laughs> stick, which is basically what you'd have. So Yeah. Well, remember the, uh, the, the Sony um, 4K media players? Mm-hmm. Those are pretty cool. Yeah. They came yeah, with like, what they come with, like 10 movies? Yeah, that's, um, yeah, they came, and then you had to buy everything through them for, it, it, it yeah. came with, and it came with 4K movies. Yeah. That was like the original way you could get 4K when 4K first came out. And it's, I looked into it. I, I wish I could have gotten one at the time. I would have definitely done it. I just, I don't know if it, I can't even remember the price of it. To be honest think, with you, I think they're like what three or four hundred dollars, weren't they? Yeah, Something it wasn't like crazy. Yeah, Some, it wasn't, I can't it wasn't remember outrageous. what stopped me, yeah. but I think I actually I think what slowed me down it was it was exclusive to Sony Sony yeah. stuff. And, but they have great discs. They do produce some of the best discs. Mm-hmm. Um, they they have the uh, IMAX enhanced. They run mm-hmm. with that. A lot of the discs have done that. So th- they're always on the leading edge of producing good home theater quality discs. Um, so it's, uh, it's, yeah, that was fun. I, I wish, I mean, I have the Zipiti. I loved, I love the media players. I love mm-hmm. running stuff like that. I love to be able to get as much content in me at one, like sit down and just jump around. So, well, but anyways, right. so, okay. What so do we got? You want to start with honorable mentions and you talking, yes. you're talking crap about physical media, man. Come on, man. Package media. Yeah. Can't go, I'm talking can't go 4K, 
4K releases this year. What do we got? Let me let me show you a really slick disc. You know this movie? This What's movie? that? Chaos Walking. Daisy Chaos. Ridley, Tom Holland, Mads Mikkelsen. This is a this is a, a steelbook version of it. Steelbook version. That's and nice this cover, is one yeah. of the slickest looking package. Me, I had to get it just because it's just so cool. Look at that. Yeah. Now the movie. That's nice. The movie is uh, it's it's a good movie. It's decent, you know. Um, it it's really good in four K. It's got a lot of color with HDR. Um, it doesn't have a lot of intense scenes. Um, you know, it's not a real high action film. It's a lot okay. of dramatic. Um, but the HDR is really nice in this thing. They've got this. This the, the premise of the movie. We, we could go on. I won't try to go on too much about this. Is that I'm sorry about the clicking noise. I know this is probably killing you. This is the no, uh, that's fine. Inside, um, is that what men are thinking can be heard? So, like women and oh, all of the men could hear what you're thinking in your mind. So, yeah. Anyway, hence the title, "Chaos Walking." <laughs> yeah, should be "Dead Man Walking." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So um, anyway, so Daisy Ridley is like this astronaut who accidentally lands on this planet where it's mostly men in this community, in this one community, it's mostly men who have, well, I won't give away the whole story, <laughs> but yeah. the, the, the hearing of, the, of your thoughts is, is uh, rendered as what they call noise. And so everybody okay. has like some, this noise around your head and they're like little glowing sort of ephemeral kind of like spiritual things that just kind of float around your head when you're thinking and the color that they use is really nice and it follows it follows a lot of the characters so it's got a lot of nice color um it's got atmos um and i'll say in some scenes it's really great i don't think it's you know it's not like other films where you have a great audio experience to the whole thing but it does have some really good dolby atmos moments um, cool. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. I haven't seen that one. Sounds like a good uh, date night movie for the wife. <laughs> Sounds like something she would like too. It's, but yeah, I'll definitely check that one out. Okay. All right. Um, I, let me give you my first honorable okay. mention. Okay. Come on, Smokey and the Bandit. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Come on. You got to go with Smokey and the Bandit. That okay, movie, so tell me how uh, did it look. I did not. That's that's one movie I did not look. I did not see on 4K. How does it look? The best it's ever looked. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's why it's in honorable mentions. It doesn't look fantastic, but it, it looks for Smokey and the Bandit. I was just so excited to watch it. I thought mm -hmm. the colors were good. The greens, the scenery, everything. I just thought things popped in a way that I hadn't seen in the past. And then you have the sound was nice. It was, like I said, it's an honorable mention. I am. I wanted to put it in because this is one of those movies that when you see it come up and it's getting its 4k release, you're like, Oh, okay. I, I have to have, I mean, Smokey and the Bandit, come on. And it's, I thought it was, I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was really good. That's cool. So, yeah. And, I mean, it's an, see, from my side, I'm going for the experience in the room. And this is one of those, you know, I, I, I can't remember what year that came out. Was it 70, 78, something like that? It was Smokey and the Bandit, I think. And it's, that was just one of those fun, fun movies that, and I was only, I didn't see it in the theaters. I wasn't lucky enough. So this is, this is my way to experience these movies in a theater environment. And it's just, they're just so much fun. It's just, just leave your brain at the door and have a good time. Well, you notice so much stuff too, when you watch these older movies, things that you probably never saw before. Maybe it was on TV, broadcast TV, but it was oh, yeah. four three. You're missing out yeah. on all the cinematic part elements i mean it's got to look pretty good you know yeah oh way uh, better than a 20 inch you know four by three tv on <laughs> hbo back in the 80s yeah uh, <laughs> yeah for sure yeah so that's right. that's why i put it in honorable mentions what okay. else do you got all right I, my second one and i've got all these discs with me because i'm i'm pushing physical media tonight <laughs> yeah you are Nice. That was now that came out. Um, did that come that came out this year? 
right around like Lent, right? Right around yeah. that. I think it what it did come out. I absolute that's te- he's showing ten commandments for people that I'm sitting here because t- we're on YouTube as well. And you showed it up, the 4K oh. release of the Ten Commandments. Yeah, awesome. This... I l- absolutely loved that movie. I wanted to review it. It's just so long, but it looks so good. <laughs> it looks great. It really looks it... great. Um, I guess in 2010 they did a like a 6K scan of it. Oh, okay. Um, and it had released like a 1080p uh, restoration version, but now they, you know, they brought out the 4K. Um, it's got Dolby Vision. Um, it's great. I mean, um, it's streaming like at the bit. The bit rate was the bit rate was really good. It was like 50 megabits per second. A lot of it. Um, the color is really good. Um, you can still see a lot of the, you know, the scenes where. Uh, you know, they use blue screen or whatever, you know, the, the technology they the use. The green the screen, to, uh, blue screen, whatever they had, yeah. yeah. Um, so that, you know, they're not getting rid of that. But the scenes that are, like, shot on a set look really, really nice. But they, they did shoot a lot of it yeah. in, in, on, on location in Egypt, actually, too. But And that stuff looks really good. Um, you know, um, as far as the audio goes, you know... Um, it's a lossless English, uh, well, English um, DTS HD, uh, Master Audio 5.1. So that's been around, right? Yeah. Um, but in you know for for you know for a film that's that old, um, you know, it's over sixty years old. It sounds really good. Still, I mean, there's a couple of clipping moments here and there, but God, I don't know how you can get yeah. any better for a film that's that old. That's what I thought too. When I was, why I was, I could not believe how old it was. And you, when you're sitting there experiencing it in the theater, and I'm like, "Is this what did they get? Did anybody get to experience it this way back in the day when this was released in theaters?" Because I, I don't think they had. I don't think anybody could have experienced it, or maybe a, I don't know if they had the systems then. Mm. You know, and. It just, it, this is a movie that when I was a kid, my parents used to let me stay up to watch. Uh, I was the oldest of four and we'd put, they'd put all the kids to bed and then they'd come and get me, sneak mm-hmm. me out and let me stay up and watch this. And again, watching it on four by three, 10 commandments and the whole entire, you know, that it's just such a grandiose movie to mm-hmm. begin with. And now to see it in my theater on a big screen like that, it just, it really, and the colors were, Oh my God, the robes, the, everything, the sky, the, yeah. the water. Oh my God. Yeah. And we're it talking just, about the 1950. It was really, really. For anybody listening, we're talking about the 1956 version, which is CC, yeah. <laughs> Cecil B. DeMille's uh, second uh, attempt at this movie. The first one was in 1923, uh, the black and white version. It was, uh, but that was pretty, that yeah. was pretty incredible for that time too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So they, this was, you know, released late in March uh, to celebrate 65th anniversary. Um, I'll show it again. It's a good experience. Home theater experience, man. Yeah, it's it a, is. It, it, re- a- it really is incredible that they mo- made movies like this and Ben-Hur and Spartacus and all those epic and Lawrence yeah. of Arabia. Oh my God. It's just incredible. Yeah. And, and to have a system now to be able to appreciate that, I think is, is so much fun. It's, I mean, that's my listeners, all the home theater fans. It's like, that's what they make these movies for now. And Mm -hmm. it's, and I think it is kind of funny that, you know, a little tangent here is when we, we look at and see how many 4k discs are being bought. And we're like, we marvel at like, people like us are like well why is it only like six percent why is it only this why how come blu-ray is selling so many and it's like but it's like it's such a do you know how many people you know how much you have to have to appreciate a 4k disc so it it doesn't it doesn't bother me it doesn't surprise me that it's only six percent eight percent of that actually sometimes you'll see the the numbers and you'll be like wow it was almost 10 percent 4k this week and you're like, that's pretty good. And that's usually the sign that something big came out that week, you know, and we all went to the store to grab it. Right. But it's it's such a small niche market that actually can appreciate a 4K disc. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, What's your other honorable? You want to just do two? Because I've got plenty, I got plenty, but let's just, maybe we should cut off at two. Um, 
All right. Well, let me. I have a couple more. Let me do. Um, or I could briefly well, I show a few put that this I think are good too. Instead of getting too deep, I have. Let, I'll, let, I'll give you two right off the bat that I okay. really, really liked for the same for kind of different reasons, but the same reason. I thought the picture was fantastic. I thought the sound was fantastic. One had an unbelievable picture over the other, and that's in the line of fire. Oh, I thought that. That one, the picture on that was so crystal clear. I mm-hmm. thought it was throughout the movie. I thought the sound was crystal clear. I thought it was just really, really. A, it's not a movie that it, that you could say is a lot of fun, and that's why it didn't make my top five. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. It's not one that you sit. It's not a popcorn movie. It's not like that. But this next one that I was gonna, I lump in with it that I really, really loved. I've actually watched it a couple of times. Uh, Last Action Hero. Okay so much fun and that that's another one with the music the 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 picture on that and just how much fun that movie is and i i put a lot of stock into that as well not just the picture and the sound but how much you get into the movie and how much fun that is to have everything that's going on like he's going down the road and the the dynamite's landing and, the, and it's all just like a mockery of the entire Hollywood scene. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. You're sitting there and you're enjoying it. And the sounds are going on all around you. And it's just, it's just a, it's so much fun. And I, I really, really enjoyed that one in a completely different way from in the line of fire, but they both had really nice pictures, vibrant pictures that I thought really just popped off the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So did you have any, a couple, a couple more, couple more before actually. we get to our top five. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The oh, original. the colors are crazy. Did you? Yeah. Are you, you going to bring this one up? I wasn't going to, but yeah, it, it didn't <laughs> make my top, but yeah. it's, yeah, that's a really good one too. The colors. I haven't actually sat down and watched that in its entirety. I have mm-hmm. it and I've just popped it's around on nice it because I did want to see the colors. Some of those scenes. It's got the what? Say that again. Oh, it's got that sparkly oh, header nice. there. Isn't that kind of nice? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty Yeah, cool. I mean, I think, um, it, 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 God, this is the best that it's ever looked. It, it looks really good. And when you think about this movie, what's interesting is you think about color, don't you? Because it's candy. It's all in the candy factory. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, but it's funny because everybody, I haven't seen it in years until I watched it again with, in 4K. And you forget about the beginning of the scene. It's a quite a long first part of the movie where they're in this kind of sort of drab, you know, town drab. Yeah, nobody has anything. And it's just or all these earthy yeah. tones. But then they get to the chocolate factory, and everything's everything's changed. So it's, it looks it looks pretty good. It's yeah. an honorable honorable mention for me. I Similar up- to uh, Wizard of Oz, how they started in yeah. black and white and went to and then popped you with all the color. And this mm-hmm. one here, they started in a drab way, mm-hmm. and then that color just jumps right off the screen. And I thought the drab looks as I started the movie. I thought that even looked good too. And I, I, I admittedly like jumped around, fast forwarded through that, but it still looked really good. Mm-hmm. You're like, and it. I think that it plays. You know, the the HDR that they used or whatever on that. I just thought it looked really good. And again, like you said, we say with all these older movies, it's the best they've ever looked. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And what I like is like I never, I haven't seen it in so long. You know. But I get yeah. to see it. Yeah, I've seen it like, on TV, like flipping around almost. the channels. Okay. Yeah. Right, just a couple Absolutely. more, real quick. Ready? Wesley Snipes. Yep. Blade. Oh yeah! Did that come out this year? I thought that was last yeah. year. Oh yeah! Wow. I thought that was last year. That's a great one, though. And I'll that tell one. You in two seconds. <laughs> yeah, I thought that came out last fall. I could be wrong. Yeah, maybe I just. Anyway, you you are right. It came out in December at the end of last year. Okay, let me. Oh, I, I, I've been. I've been, nope. I've been <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready. So I got one more. Then the backup. Have you seen Big Fish? No, I've actually never even seen that movie. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. You and McGregor. Oh uh, yeah, Finney. Uh, I love you and McGregor too. Yeah. It's a Tim Burton film. It looks really good. There's some moments in this film that are so super colorful and just really gorgeous. It's a nice film. To, it's a nice like Sunday film. 
to put on your yeah. put in your home theater. Yeah. Nice. Okay. All right, I'll have to check that one out. All right. All right. We ready to get to our top five? We'll start with five first. Okay. Well, I don't have what do you one got? in order. I, you Can go you first. Put them in order. There's only five, Jeff. <laughs> you go. You go first. <laughs> you remember do, that do, do, from? Uh, <laughs> you remember that from uh, Raiders of the Lost, <gasps> Lost Ark? You go. Hosps. What was that? Very dangerous. Yes. You go first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you go first. All right. Well, you, you want, want me be, to be first. You, you want you want to be last though. You want to be last. Okay, so I'll go first. Ready? No, it doesn't right. matter to me. Okay. And I'm going to surprise you with one. You're the mind. technical guy. I'm not I okay. Don't know if I'm technical, but okay. And what what's going to happen if I have the same pick as you though? Are you going to say that was we your talk about or it? Whatever. Okay. No, well, yeah, I'll say, I'll say what, it, no, I won't. I'll, I'll just, I'll say my number five. And then when, if I have, say you said my number two coming up and I'll just say, I'll keep my mouth shut. And then when we get to my number two, I'll go, I guess what number two is. <laughs> and we'll talk about it again. Then and we can argue about flying by the seat of our pants, buddy. All right. All right. What do we got? Cause I literally didn't prepare anything for this. I just grabbed a bunch of 4k Blu-rays. <laughs> No. Okay. Your number five. Yeah, I, guess, I don't know if I should put okay, I'll whatever. Don't whoever's listening, just realize I'm doing this in the fly My and I'm not serious <laughs> about this order. However, Godzilla 2014. Bam. Yep. That's that's my number five. Ooh. You get on. Look at this. So there you go. Nah. That why that's you, my number why five. <laughs> What's that? I, I lost you for a sec. Here. Yeah, it's a little laggy. Yeah. Um, uh, why should viewers pick this up, though, DJ? Why should they get it on physical media? You know. The sound? The Atmos? Yes. The picture? Yes. It's incredible. It's incredible. Although, I will say, I had just reviewed that in uh, the, the standard 1080p version. Mm -hmm. and it came out like a month later on 4k there was no announcement because we were working our way up to godzilla versus kong and i thought that the 4k ver uh, their standard version looked and sounded really good mm -hmm. but then obviously when this came out it is it is really really nice mm -hmm. um the sound in that there's there's a couple of um a couple of nice HDR scenes on the bridge that I really liked, that I really enjoyed. Uh, that's later in the movie. Uh, and the bass in this movie, when he roars, the mm. ending, when he walks off into... It just... It's incredible. It, it really is... As, as a home theater fan, it's... The entire series is a must-own, to be honest with you. Um, but yes, this movie, Godzilla and... I just love the way that's made. I love the way they portrayed Godzilla as far as um, being uh, honest to the history. And mm -hmm. But the, the picture and sound are absolutely must-owns for home theater fans. Yeah, I mean, there's some criticism about, about the film that Godzilla isn't really in it isn't that much. Um, the, the Muto well, characters... neither was Jaws. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the Mu Muto, Muto characters, the... Uh, yeah. The, the Mo, uh, Muto, sorry, massive uh, terrestrial organisms, massive unidentified yeah, yeah. Uh, terrestrial right. organisms. Those are the coolest creatures in this movie. And they're, I think they're in there more than Godzilla, but the sound, you know, that clicking noise yeah. that they make, right? Oh, yeah. It's incredible. I don't know if nobody's heard them before or seen this movie. It's a little bit like in District 9 in that movie where the, those creatures had that weird kind of clicking noise. It's a little bit like that. But you can hit when, when um, uh, Ford, the, the character, the main, well, the main character in the movie, this, the kid who grows up and he becomes a lieutenant in the Navy, mm -hmm. I believe. When he first experiences the Muto and this, the, the, that clicking noise and he's kind of like right behind him, that. There's some great audio mo moments in this in this film that yeah. I think the sound is just incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's a great mix. That, um, and yeah, yeah, absolutely must own 
Um, all right, that was a great number five. What right. do you have for your next one? Let me see if it's uh, hey, wait, anything like to yours. That was my number five. Oh, okay. So I'll see, pass it back to see? me. All right, we're we're moving right along here. Well, I'm gonna save my. You know what? I'm gonna save my surprise ones. I'm gonna save my surprise one for last for you. Okay, let's see where you come in with this one. <laughs> You're this is kind of fun. Okay, go ahead. I you- I saw it, I saw it peek up there. I know what it is. Oh, you do. Yeah, I saw it okay. peek up there, and uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I had that at, go ahead, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, what's that, the ultimate edition that just came out, I didn't put that in my top five, Ooh. that, I had a feeling, that's why I didn't put it in my, I actually have it just underneath as a, uh, as an honorable mention, and I didn't say it because I had a feeling you were going to be bringing it up in your top five. The only reason I, I can't there, all the ones that are in my top five, I can't knock them out. I couldn't knock them out for Batman V Superman because it's a re-release. I do like the new tone mapping mm-hmm. I do, or the color correction or whatever. I'm sorry. Uh, and I do like the new, I absolutely love the four by three scenes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely love those. I'm a huge fan of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I can't say that I, I couldn't, that, uh, on my top five, I can't knock it out. I can't knock any of them out for it. So, but it I can, is, I, I absolutely loved it. I can appreciate that. Um, the one thing I like about this movie is that you can watch it over and over and over and just find different stuff in it because it's just like, yes. it's almost like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like reading a newspaper where, you know, you open up the pages and you like, you jump to this story, to this story, to this story. And it's kind of like, it's a little, it's a little bit of a puzzle, um, but visually it's really incredible. And I love, yeah, like you said, I love the switch to, to the square format back to the wide and, uh, uh, some really good sound, a lot of drama. You know, it's a lot of drama in that movie. Um, but another extra thirty minutes to the original. There's a lot to see in this movie for sure. And I, I like the scene where Wayne's tower crashes down. I think that looks really good um, in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was originally cut out right with the little girl, the, all the the girl and like the kids were like kindergarten class or something were coming through. Um, there's a there's a lot of new scenes that look really good. So okay. I can yeah. appreciate you knocking it out of five, top five. Well, it, it'd be tough. So here's my number four, and uh, you may have it higher. I you haven't said it yet, so I'm okay. gonna guess you do. I have the uh, Indiana Jones set at number four. There it is. There you go, big poppy. There you go. So I have that at number four because this is another one of those. I haven't watched all of them yet. I've skipped around on a couple of them. I did watch um, Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark, first one. Um, and it's, again, it's like being a kid. I did see that in the theater and watching it in my theater and the sound. I've never experienced it this way. And it's the entire set. It's like the only reason I haven't watched all of them. It's like this is one of those like I want to get the family together. I want to get everybody in and just sit down, pop a bunch of popcorn and and just enjoy this and be like, kids, this is what it was like. I wanted to make them wait outside my theater door for a line for some reason. This would have like when I was a kid. And these are these are the fun things we saw. We went on the Indiana Jones set or whatever that they have at Disney or Universal. I think it's Disney. And it's just. I, the kids these days, kids these days, they don't appreciate it like we do. And I think it's just a great set. And it's, again, it's never looked and sounded this good. It does look great. I I, I mean, I kind of wish it had a little bit more exclusive packaging. I think there's a Steelbook version of it. Is that right? Um, you know, it comes with a um, little bit of a poster here, a little fold-out poster. It comes with this thing here, all the movies. Um. Yep. Anyway, just for your viewers to. Oh yeah. Yeah, I have mine displayed um, proudly <laughs> uh, on my movie racks. What like what you said about experiencing experiencing it as a kid? I saw it too when I was a kid, and I kind of remember this. It, it's like the way I wanted to remember it, with like lush colors and super yeah. rich black, like depth in the jungle and. Um, I just, you yeah, know what? I, 
I thought the greens and stuff in the I actually I I loved that. But you you know what's weird to me? This is and I really I don't know why, but I was fascinated by like when they were back at his college and looking in the background at the books and looking at the detail that you could mm. see the detail in the like I think it was tweed or whatever that they're wearing and then just seeing all those little things that we never had the opportunity to see that stuff when we were kids. One, we were just in awe or petrified because it was, we had snakes, we had boulders, we had, I mean, it was a scary movie when we were kids and, but it, it was an adventure movie. I remember the Atari video game, which was like a block with a funny hat on it that ran around the screen. But I, I just thought I, I enjoyed those quieter scenes that, like I said, back at the college or the university or whatever, um, just as much as, like you said, those lush scenes in the jungle and everything and, and the, the sky, the vibrant colors and it just, mm -hmm. the sound and the sound, the enveloping sound that was in the room. It was just mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. And I, mean, I thought so. the, the, the special effects at the end were pretty good too, with the melting of the, um, yep. you know, the, when they opened the arc up, um, yeah, it's a. It held up really well. It held did. up really well. They did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, that was my number four. So we're moving on to what did it was that your number four, or your what did you have? Sure. That at? Okay. We'll put well, it on four. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Moving on then. What is your number three? This okay. is where we're. My <laughs> this is where I think I might surprise you. Okay. My number three. All right. Okay. Like I said, this is going to change when I do my year. My yearly. But okay, this is, I think this film is really good. Yeah. Did you see it? Did you take a peek of it? It's Super 8. Super 8 in 4K. Now, that this, does that that doesn't have an Atmos mix, does it? No, it doesn't. It has that, um if I remember it, yeah. right. It's I think it a, just I think it's got the same 5.4. 5.1, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have that. I haven't watched it in its entirety. It's another one of those discs. Oh, I no, put it's in. got True I, HD. It's got 7 channel. It went up to 7 channel, 7.1 True seven, HD. 7 one yeah. True HD, um, okay. I This is a really fun film, especially if you're interested in filmmaking. It's really... Yes. It gets you excited about the possibility of making films, and it looks great. It, the cinematography it does. in this movie is incredible. Okay, yes. well, obviously, you know, when you got Steven Spielberg producing it, you're going to get the best you can. But that train crash <laughs> in the beginning, yes. the sound is incredible. It is good. Yeah. There are things flying all over the place. You know, one of the one of the kids falls down, and a big chunk of the train lands right in front of him. It is. I don't know why I was thinking it was five. Well, still five one, but it. There's as long a as lot of the good one. stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'll be honest with you. It's If that had an Atmos, I pr I would have watched it. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it didn't go... And it just... And I, it's, I'm kind of ashamed of that because yeah. I, I am a stickler for the fact that you don't have to have Atmos to have good sound. But yeah. with everything that's going on, you get like a oh, Super 8. If they had said it had Atmos because of that train scene, because of everything, I would have sat down and been like, oh, I got to see this whole thing and experience it and blah, blah, blah. But where it was like, oh, it didn't feel like much of an upgrade. And I, I don't know what else was going on, but I, I, I did watch that scene. I thought it was good, but mm -hmm. I just I, I just didn't. The idea of getting all enveloped over something that didn't have Atmos just didn't grab me at the time. And I'm a little ashamed of that. A little You're ashamed of that. Atmos Sorry about star, that, everybody. Man. <laughs> I know. Can you believe that? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> all but right. I, I'll, My I, number. I think it's. What? Well, I, visually, I'm just going to reinforce this has a very, very nice aesthetic that I think you would like on your. To see on your screen air projector it's i'll watch it this week it's very painterly it's almost like a lot of the scenes look like a rembrandt painting it's very Ooh, nicely produced look at you yeah okay you getting and all a, hoity toity and it's a fun it's a fun <laughs> story okay oh yeah no i've seen it's been a while since i've seen it but I did want to see that train scene and I did want to see, jump around and hear some stuff and see some stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, that's what I, I got. My mind's a racing. 
All right. My number three, this is where I'm going to surprise you. Okay. And that's why I call it, this is the top 4K releases of 2021, not the 4K disc releases. I had to go number three, and I can't knock it out. None of these will knock it out. Not even Indiana Jones I would put in front of this because this movie was so much fun. The Tomorrow War on Amazon Prime, which is not a disc. You can't watch it on a disc. You can't compare it on a disc to the streaming but this movie has a, it it looked fantastic it sounded fantastic it is as cl- it is and i i i watched this movie and jumped on and did a 5 minute or whatever podcast just about it because i thought it was that good it is the best in my opinion the best streaming movie to date and it rivals a lot of uh, rivals a lot of discs that's blasphemy, Thoughts? my friend. Blasphemy. <laughs> no, I, I, I saw the film. It does. It's very, very impressive. It's very impressive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Last week I had Ara I, call me and he just wanted to talk about it. He watched it and he's Ara Dadarian from HT Guys. He called me and he's like, we got to talk about this. He was blown away mm-hmm. because it is, it's one of those things that was when you see something that good on streaming. It's like you're the entire time I'm thinking, is this a, if it feels like this should be a disc and this movie was supposed to be released in theaters, Mm -hmm. obviously Amazon bought it smart. It seemed it it was shot very well. So the HDR translated fairly well to streaming. There wasn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't find, I've watched it a couple of times, a few times actually, and I didn't find any any black cry, any crushing or anything. And usually you get that with streaming. You get some banding in the sky and stuff. I thought it was very smooth. Mm -hmm. I thought it came across very, I thought Amazon did a very good job of getting this out in a way that we were able to experience it in, in the best possible quality. And, and it came through and it, I mean, it has incredible sound because you have those aliens coming at them throughout the movie and there, the spikes are flying. Well, there's stuff going on all around you through this entire movie. Mm -hmm. Now you might not like the movie, not you in particular, but a person might not like this movie, but if you're a home theater fan, you have to, and you want your room engaged. I mean, come on. You, it, there's not much better than this. It's full engagement the entire time. Yeah, and the the way they transport through time that was a really nice effect, and it looks really good uh, with HDR. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the story is very formulaic. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know if we should get into the story, but yeah, no, we, no spoilers because I'd like yeah. people to try and get to it if they haven't seen it. I don't know who really that's listening that hasn't seen it <laughs> be yeah. like i refuse <laughs> um but no it's um yeah it is formulaic mm-hmm. it is there are, there is one scene when chris pratt he picks up his phone right and he goes to look at it and they go to show it on screen right so he goes to look at his phone and you could see that like and it, it was one of those this is a nitpicky thing of course <laughs> But when you, if you pick up your phone to look at it, you know, there's a certain angle that you're going to, that's natural for you to look at your phone and the shot that they showed when the camera had to see the phone, it was, it looked like his hand, the angle of his wrist and everything. He was clearly showing this phone to the camera, not his face. <laughs> and that kind of, that's one of those things like, well, that was weird. Cause who's looking at that? It's a, you know, it's a continuity thing. Like his wrist should be. Mm-hmm a certain way when he's looking at the phone, but then when the camera sees it, the wrist was bent wrong mm-hmm. and you're like, Oh, that was weird. But those are <laughs> tiny, tiny little things that you just, you know, who cares? That's not what we're here for. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, it's a time travel piece. What do you, what do you think? You know, it could be Terminator. It could be, I mean, which, which theory of time travel do you subscribe to? I don't, it doesn't matter. It's fun. Yeah, I think, uh, it, you know, it was, it was very cliche in moments that, you know, some of the characters that barely any character development and they die. I mean, it's just like, you give it like, <laughs> well, that's you get like, why. You get like five seconds of character development. But, um, you know, I think what it did was, and we're not giving any spoilers away, it kind of gave the audience uh, what the audience wanted, but in yeah. a different way. And they say that's, you know, you can use cliche 
and, and they say great script writers will deliver a story, get, deliver what the audience wants, but in a way they never expected it. And I think, I think it, it did have a good payoff at the end. Yeah, so, I thought yeah. so too. I thought um, that the pacing of the movie, you thought it was over and then it, it ramped back up. And you got even more. So I, I really, really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. And um, I think it's a great sign of things to come as far as streaming goes. And mm -hmm. that that's why it made my top. It made my top three, Jeff. Okay. All right. What do we got? Uh, we're getting to the top two here. What, are. what are you up to and next? Man, what do you I got? Am, like, torn. Okay. I don't have the copy on me. I don't have the disc. I forgot it. But my number two... Do you remember the name of it? Of course I remember the name of it. <laughs> okay, let me see if you get it. It's a biopunk thriller. Biopunk thriller? Biopunk. Think biopunk. What movie? Think about biopunk movies. <laughs> what could that possibly be? Okay, it stars one of my favorite women actresses of all time, Uma Thurman. Gattaca. Yes. That you nah. have it number two. Nice. <laughs> I told. I you. have that. Haven't watched it yet. <laughs> I told you. Uh -huh. I'm like, all right, this is. I'm really loose about this. But when a movie has impact on you, I think when you sit it down yeah. and you really watch it, and it looks good and it sounds good. I'm not saying this is the best experience of the year, but right. I really enjoyed it. It had grain like you wouldn't believe. It had grain. <laughs> grain and then some grain um but i really like what they did with the film i thought it was uh, really enjoyable to see it um remastered and um it has atmos it has an atmos track yeah so uh it's good hdr um there's you know uh what i like about the movie is and this is a little bit parallel to when we talked about dr sleep is that there's kind of like this undercurrent of you know, like noise or like heartbeat or Gattaca has a different thing. It has like this really yeah. spacious sound and you almost feel like you're in that sort of very cold institutional place. And I really like the soundtrack to it. Okay. I think it was really great. Um, and it was just really fun to watch, you know, Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman, um, Jude Laws in the movie in the younger days yep. and just pull off this really yeah. cool film. It's, it's a really good film. It's very... I think it really, I, um, I, I, th I think it resonates, especially with COVID and everything else. I think, you know, with all everybody, you know, questioning DNA mm. and viruses and all that stuff. And it really resonates today. So I, that's kind of yeah. why I brought it up. You, you had me at when you compared it to Dr. Sleep and that mm -hmm. resonating sound throughout the movie. I, I'm really intrigued. I want to check that out. I, do, I really do. I'm like, I'm really excited to hear that because I, I know exactly what you're saying. Um, I love it when they do that in movies. I talk about it all the time when I'll review a movie and I'll be like, this is a quieter scene, but it's sometimes mm -hmm. those are one of my favorite scenes in movies where it's just an office scene and you can hear the ventilation system running or you, you know, or something kick and a, a metallic twang goes off in the background or some mm -hmm. very quiet stuff. And that sometimes in a case like this where you're saying like it, it to give that institution feeling throughout the movie mm -hmm. um you can really get what was i just i just talked about oh um last week i did uh independence day mm -hmm. and they had that inside air force one and it was like so when they were in air force one and independence day you could hear the like they're in a plane mm -hmm. and i said in the podcast i was like well, that's kind of weird because don't you think Air Force would, would one would have better insulation? <laughs> like, like you know what I mean? Like, y they're not in a, in a Cessna. <laughs> it was. I mean, you, you're sitting there. They're on couches. They've, it's a beautiful plane. They're all relaxed. I mean, they're not relaxed. They're talking about the end of the world here. But it's like you can hear the. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not what it would be like. But it's like, but when you're sound mixing it, you're like, oh, let's give it some sound noises, you That's know, so like funny. plain noises, isn't stock, it? Stock, stock, stock audio, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stock 747 noises or whatever it is. But I'm lucky there wasn't a propeller. <laughs> um, all right. My number two. Come on. I don't know where you have this. You've only got one left, my friend. 
You've only yeah, got one left. Yeah. I've got two left, uh, uh, and you haven't mentioned either of these yet. So I'm, I'm gonna. I don't know. You're if not gonna, gonna have this. You, your number two or number one is not gonna be my number one. I can guarantee. I know you you've only got one left. So mine. <laughs> I had to number two. I had to go with Snyder Cut. It's oh. the four hour epic. I don't call it a four hour movie. I call it six 40 minute movies. <laughs> but you're talking about the I, streaming, right? Well, streaming and the 4k, I bought the 4k. I got it. It doesn't come out here until September. Oh, you bought, but the I, bu- I imported it. Yeah. Oh, I paid okay. like 85 bucks to get it over here. <laughs> and that's why I paid the money. So I have the right to put it in my top five. <laughs> oh, you killed me. Yeah, I, knew I, it's have, good. I was tempted to order it. It was just the shipping was ridiculous. So I just didn't. Yeah, it was. It's I actually I put out a call last week for um, I, I would love to get true romance. We don't mm-hmm. have that over here yet. And I'm trying to get a hold of that. I would love to get that movie because that's another movie that I think the colors are going to be great. I think the sound is going to be great. Um, really looking forward to that one. But the Snyder Cut, the 4K is it's it's better than the streaming was Mm -hmm. but i think the overall the sound everything that the the atmos track on this it Mm -hmm. just it is so nice it is so it it, i just really really enjoyed this movie i thought to not have it in the top five for me and not have it up there like this it it was an event i mean this was an event whether you're talking streaming and now the disc coming out it actually was an event that people, it, I mean, it resonated. It, people are still talking about it. I'm so, jealous. I'm jealous. I'm going to be over your way. Can I come over and uh, watch it with you? Yeah, we were. Uh, we'll talk about that afterwards, actually. I w- I'm wondering where you're going to be because, <laughs> I mean, that's I go down the Cape all the time. So we'll oh, talk. You're, you're so lucky we'll you ordered that. Wow. So I can't compete with that. There's no way I don't. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not even my number one. So let's get to your number one. Are you sure now? Yeah, I'm okay. sure. <laughs> I'm sure. You'll never guess this one. And your viewers um, going to be like, what is wrong with this guy? Uh, <laughs> uh, can I give you a clue? <laughs> yeah, please. Because there's so many movies. It's. I mean, I don't want to guess what my. I don't want to give you what mine is. But obviously, oh, it's not man. that because you're like, you'll never guess this. Go ahead. Oh, man. What's the clue? Uh, um, one of the main characters' name is Henry. Henry. Henri. <laughs> I need more than that. Uh, okay. Uh, let me think. Let me give you one is more. it an older movie? Is it a newer movie? It's... It's old. Um, I'll give you one more. Okay. The Rain in Spain. (sighs) (laughs) Um, Oh, I'm that what I don't know if that helped me. I'm going by older movie. I'm going by what came out this year. Um, Audrey Hepburn. Yes. What's the movie? <laughs> My Fair Lady. You got it, dude. There you go. There you restored, go. Restored. I was just saying. Restored in 8K. Okay. Really? This, I, I can honestly say I have not seen that movie ever. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't either. I got to check I mean, that if out. I, when I was a kid. Really? I, if this was on TV, I'd walk right by it. I mean, I had no interest in this of movie. Of course. At all. This movie is yeah. a great movie. Okay, not only does it look great in 4K, okay, the sound is really good. Yep. Um, there's some dialogue that's like, you hear these groups of people talking, and it's so crisp. The set shots in this movie look so good in 4K, and the color, for, for a movie this old, I mean, come on, this is 1964. Okay, it's got yeah. seven point one Dolby True. I was just gonna sound. say, I just pulled it up. 
Yeah, I just pulled it up. Dev- <laughs> Dolby True HD 7.1 from 1964 from My Fair Lady. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Shot on 65. <laughs> you shot on 65 wow. millimeter Eastman Kodak. All right. Anyway, like I said, um, I knew this would surprise you, but this was a great experience. Yeah. I had to rewind really? it a few times to watch how good this movie was. This is a really incredible. I mean, for all you youngsters, is it out like there, Ten Commandments, like um, Ben Hur type, like experience, like no. that good? No, it's a musical. Better? It's a musical. I know that. I'm saying the picture. <laughs> like, um, I mean, you know what I mean? Looks, like, it, the picture is sharper. It's not as saturated. Um, it's just very okay. clean looking. It's um, it's not dramatic. It's not dramatic light lighting like the Ten Commandments, but um, anyway, yeah. I, if you're if you're an aspiring screenwriter, all these young people, anybody's never seen this film. If you're a screenwriter, you're interested in character development, you're interested in story arcs, you're interested in musicals. This is a must see. It's got everything you need to learn about writing a good script. <laughs> nice. You know what? That's why I bring you on. We get between you and I. We have like the most eclectic list (laughs) it's like i'm gonna put this i don't even know if i want to put this list in the show notes because i want people to listen and not go what and just read the show notes and be like no 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 maybe i'll put it on the i don't know i don't know but now my number one oh no now you're gonna embarrass me no complete opposite no you're coming at it with you know, I mean, look at you. You're coming at it with like class and dignity, and I'm coming. I'm going to hit you upside the head with Godzilla versus Kong. I mean, that is a home theater movie. That is Godzilla versus Kong is like I have Godzilla the, the book ending my top five. You got yeah. Godzilla at five, and I had to like bite my tongue when we were talking about Godzilla because I thought that. It, I, that's, this is one of those movies I just told a couple of weeks ago. I told my listeners, like when I break down movies, I want to break down movies that are older. Like when they first come out, I don't want to be, because everybody's doing them, right? I want to mm-hmm. do other movies like I did Independence Day, obviously, mm-hmm. Fourth of July, stuff like that. But I cannot wait to break this movie down. There's so much nice nuance to this movie. Um, but there's so, the the 4K, I thought, the the HDR and 4K, especially at the end, that last battle scene in the city there, the neon, mm-hmm. and the, the it was just amazing. I That scene was amazing. Uh, for sound, you know, Kong and, and the, the, the breathing, the, the bass, the yelling, the roars, the growls, the everything, the detail in his fur that, I mean, you can go from beginning to end on this movie, every, every viewing, and you're going to be like, oh, look at that. Look at the mm-hmm. detail there. Look at that. Look at that. It just looked and sounded absolutely fantastic. Um, I thought the... I thought King of the Monsters had a little bit more. I loved in that one, as far as the, the, the movies go, I thought that one, I loved how the movie used the sound as part of Mm -hmm. the movie. It was the story to the movie, right? So that actually played into it. This here though, Godzilla versus Kong, it just, it was like, they took all of the movies, up until then in the series and they just threw everything at you and just, you just sit back and were just blown away. And I, it laughed. I laughed at the, the people, the detractors and like the story and this and that. I'm like, we're talking about a giant lizard (laughs) and a big ape on a battleship. And you're upset. You don't know how they got to the center of the earth. Come on. (laughs) Like, I'm like, and not only that, there were people that would go back at him. Like that whole center earth theory has been around for, I think centuries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's actually a, 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 a story. Like it's a theory that's been around for a long time. I'm not saying it's true, but they didn't just make it up for this movie. Mm-hmm. It's like they played off of it for this movie. Um, but yeah, the, the actual experience of sitting down and just getting bombarded and enjoying there are quieter scenes obviously you're talking about a, a deaf girl there dealing with kong and i just incredible yeah incredible. i mean i i, I kind of knew that just you like were. my fair lady 
I, I kind of knew you were going to put that movie <laughs> top yeah. in your top. That's why I didn't bother. Um, it, it is really incredible uh, what they did with the sound mix on that. Um, and I think the, the special effects, like on the aircraft carrier, like, <laughs> I yeah. mean, it, it is really, um, it, it, like you said, it's a great home theater experience. I mean, I think the, I think King of the Monsters for me had a better story. Actually, the Godzilla 2014, I thought had a better story, but, but again, yes. um, um, seeing that big in your house, it's, it's great. Yeah, you yeah. have to watch it a yeah. couple times it's, too. You can't just. <laughs> no, I know it. It's it is. It, I have watched it. I I the disc when I got that, I just uh, I couldn't wait to get to that end scene. But th it's it's one of those things like I like to, and that's what I love about the Zapiti is I can just I can pop from movie to movie so quickly, and it'll bring it up right when like where you left off. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, say I'm watching whatever I could be watching Endgame, and I'll just be like, oh, let me see that scene in Godzilla versus Kong. And then I'll mm -hmm. go to something else then go back to Endgame and it'll be right there. Um, but I sat down to, to jump around on Godzilla versus Kong and I ended up watching the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You just I was having fun with it. And it, it's just that good. That, that that's my number one so far, I would say, for the year. But I'm, I'm going to give my fair lady a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's going to knock Godzilla versus Kong off the pedestal, but it's good. You'll enjoy it. Watch it with the family. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, my wife. I, my wife loves my daughter. I, actually, I watch it with my wife and daughter. They love musicals. Absolutely. That would be fun. It's funny because those are what we did was though. we. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's funny because it's like a tea it's like a tea and crackers movie yeah exactly <laughs> tea and crackers. but it, it's funny because <laughs> the movies we chose are like the complete complete opposite right you're all right. sound power visual effects and mom like story and music <laughs> and, and well that's the experience you want <laughs> yeah but that's but that, that we're both going for the experience yeah and that's that's what you want and it, it's that's the great thing about it too it's like mm -hmm. you you design your theaters a certain way and you, you'll you'll sit down and enjoy what you want to enjoy and mm -hmm. what gives you the best experience and and to your point though like my fair lady this is the best it's ever looked i've never obviously neither of us have seen that in the theater so this is our opportunity to see what people saw back then and, and maybe, you know, experience a little culture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we uh, miss any? I mean, is that, the I'm best sure we did. What? I'm sure we did. Um, I can't really think, uh, I have another one that I think I'm going to review next week. So I didn't put it on here and I didn't want to okay. tell anybody about it. Uh, it's a, it's a, to be honest with you, it's, I've been saving it because I'm going to watch it with my son. This is a little mm -hmm. bit of a, a teaser to my listeners. Um, a listener asked me to, to review this one back in mm -hmm. February, and I, I worked hard to get a copy of it early, and I, I wasn't able to. I ordered it early. It didn't mm -hmm. come in until like literally like three or four weeks ago. Amazon held on to it, and it was out. It came out in, I want to say June, mm -hmm. I think. And I got my, it was delayed or whatever. Very excited to watch this movie. A uh, little hint, it's from 1980. Okay. And uh, really excited to watch it. And I haven't seen it at all yet. So for all I know, it could be in the top five and I just haven't seen it yet. So You know one that, um, that I was considering that has some really good moments is Wonder Woman 1984. I was extremely disappointed where that movie went. I thought... Some of it was really bad, but it looked really good. It did. The disc looked really good. They, um, I thought it sounded really good, but the, I'll be honest with you. I was, just, it's funny you mentioned that right now. I was thinking this the other day driving and just by myself. And I was like, really Wonder Woman 1984. It kind of dropped the ball. I mm. think, um, they, what would have happened if this movie came out in a normal uh, environment where we didn't have co I think this movie actually gained a lot 
because it came out on a Christmas day, yeah. uh, in streaming. And a lot of people, we had been so, we've been held back and held back for so long. And we were so starving for something like that old Eddie Murphy joke. It's like, Ooh, that's a Ritz. Mm-hmm. You're all excited to get <laughs> something to see something. Right. And I remember watching that on Christmas morning. I couldn't wait to watch that. It's, I didn't run to my theater to see it. I watched it in my theater first. And I was, I was so excited and so blown away, but the rewatchability of that movie is so poor. I just, Hmm. I just, I just don't enjoy it. And I think, I think, I I think it, it lost a lot for me in that case. It did. And the first one is nice. Yeah. And the first Wonder Woman movie was so good. I just, they did kind of drop the ball on that one. I mean, there are other movies that, you know, a couple of Alfred Hitchcocks came out, um, but they've been out there out in the collection. So like Psycho and the Birds. Yeah. Um, I thought News of the World, that uh, Tom Hanks movie. Yeah. Did you see that one? That looked pretty no, good. No, I, I didn't mean, see that one yet. Yeah, that okay. looked pretty good. Um, in 4K, um, I really liked the look of Soul. Have you seen Soul? Yeah. That came out Pixar. the same time as, yeah. Um, that's got yep. some, that audio soundtrack is really good. I'm just, I'm not so much into animation, but that could have been in my top list too, because I actually, it's an honorable mention on my, yeah, in a recent article that I did, but, um, it, the, this audio in that is really, really nice. Crisp, unbelievably crisp. Cool. Any other is that, ones that's could- also on uh, Disney plus as well, right? It, That'd be a yeah, good one to it compare. premiered on that around the same time as, Wonder Woman 1984, and it was kind of funny because people compared the two movies. They're completely different movies. But I remember, like, in my circle, like, have you seen this? Have you seen this? No, you know what? The real Soul is the the best movie. It's much better than 1984. And I'm like, they're completely two different movies, but they came out around the same time. And so, you know, (laughs) and there was nothing else in the theater, really. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. But no, that's pretty good. That's a good list. That's a good eclectic list, Jeff. I can't wait. Do you foresee what what's coming up? We'll we'll close on this. What's coming up that you foresee being really good? Um, well, they just announced dates for a couple of Alfred Hitchcock's Rare Window um, mm-hmm. and Vertigo. Those should look incredible. Um, I really like the movie The Conjuring. The Devil Made Me Do It. Did you see that yet? What was that? Uh, the conjuring up. the devil made me do it it's on uh, hbo max that was a really good oh, film okay. and that's going no, on 4k blu-ray pretty soon um i'm really looking forward oh, to cool. dune yes <laughs> the, the 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 is dune gonna make it out on it's i don't know if it's coming out on disc though is it yeah or the old no dune. no the, the old the 1984 the, old, the new one dune oh it's coming out on disc mm-hmm Oh, okay. A lot of people don't All like right, that movie. That'll they be feel, good. Like some people don't get that movie. They just—it's kind of an acquired taste a little bit. But it's a really interesting concept. I really—I like thought it. it. I thought the people yeah. that read the book didn't like it as much because mm-hmm. I thought it didn't stick as true to the. I didn't read it, um, mm-hmm. so it's one of those things where the book. The people that read the book were so attached to the book and loved the story that they thought that the movie <laughs> didn't do it justice. I think, if I remember right. It's one of those things. Yeah. So. Um, you've got, um, uh, oh, I'm. this is the one I'm really looking forward to. Taxi Driver is coming out. Yes. Yep. But, That's coming out in September, October, I think. It, like yeah, but it's in that Columbia Pictures 4K oh, no. collection or whatever. So you got to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 400 bucks isn't it no the this, this one um you know it's interesting about package media like this one here has been priced about like it's it's i think it was supposed to be 199 or something but it's been priced like 110 maybe it's supposed to be 160 oh okay um the first columbia pictures collection do you have that one the box set no um um that that was a really nice package set. Um, it's got six movies in it. It's got League of Their Own. It's got Jerry Maguire. Um, the, the, but the, the real seller for that was Lawrence of Arabia in 4K for the first time. 
Um, interestingly enough, that I got it for like 150 maybe, and it went and it was sold out, and you couldn't get it anymore. And now I see copies on Amazon for a thousand bucks. And I'm like, because um, they only made a Columbia certain number Classics of them. Volume. Yeah, Columbia Classics Volume Two is selling for 119 right now, so that's not bad. That's a great price. So yeah, we sh- you should grab it. Um, but it's got Taxi Driver in it. Um, Oliver. <laughs> Oliver, um, Anatomy of a Murder, Stripes. Social Network is another one. I, I think that would look pretty good. Yep. And um, Sense and Sensibility. I'm not so excited about some of them. Yeah. But oh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Here's the big one. Yes, yeah, so I, I pre-ordered that. You should pre-order that for 119 because that's a that's a pretty decent. It's a beautiful collection. It, it won. You know, there's a industry publication, India uh, Media Play News, that you know votes on the best package media. And like last year, the Columbia Classics won. It was the best one. I think Game of Thrones came in second. Um, it's a nice. You gotta love package media, man. I mean, I've got like the James Bond collection. It's just. It's so cool to have that yep. in the library. Um, hey, one more thing I forgot. What's that? Star Star Trek, the original oh, yeah. four movie collection. <sighs> the motion picture, The Wrath of Khan. Wrath of Khan <laughs> is definitely one I want to check out. By the way, I did just buy that set. <laughs> I just clicked. I just All clicked. right, well, uh, taxi driver, man, taxi driver. Yep. Taxi Driver, Social Network, Stripes. Got to see Stripes. <laughs> stripes um, in 4K. <laughs> stripes in 4K. Bill Murray's never looked better. Um, <laughs> Star Trek Wrath of Khan is... My buddy and I, on my other podcast where we talk comics, we used to do a segment. One, we, had two, we did two podcasts a week. Mm-hmm. And we'd break down a movie every week, just like having fun, like what we thought of the story and everything. And we, he's a big Star Trek fan. I liked the movies growing up. I wasn't mm-hmm. a huge Star Trek fan, though. And we went back and we watched like the, the first one, which is the, what do they call it? The motion picture, motion picture Star Trek, yeah. the motion picture. Yeah. Oh, my God, does that not hold up? I know. A Star oh, Trek fans really? everywhere. Go, oh, my God. It's so slow. <laughs> when they show them, like, but it's supposed to be, like, it is basically an, a complete, like, this is the first time everybody was seeing Star mm-hmm. Trek on the big screen, right? Mm-hmm. And it was like 10 years after it was off the air. So this was, it was a huge deal. So there's that scene when they first show the Enterprise and they have, I'm hoping when they remaster it, they redo some of the special effects because there was one when Kirk and I can't remember who uh, Captain Kirk and whoever else was at the front of the uh, the little the little transport ship that was taking them to it, and they're supposed to be looking out the bay window or the front of this tiny ship as they're approaching the Enterprise. But the special effects they used, they were like in 2D plastered against the, like they just pasted it on the front of the ship. So it just looked awful, like a hologram. It was so bad. But then the the Star Trek porn of just the slow motion for like 20 minutes past the Enterprise, like every, like, there's the word Enterprise. There's some more lights. There's some spotlights. <laughs> there's an engine. There's this for like 20 minutes. And you're like, oh my God. And now it's coming out on 4K and you're going to get all that 20 minutes in, of 4K glory of the Enterprise. It's just, oh, it's just so like, ah. Uh. <laughs> But it's fun. Um, don't get me wrong. It's fun because that's what that movie was. But Wrath of Khan, that's, that one was a little better. Still a little hokey at times, but. Yeah, but it really had a good. more, it was a more it. dramatic plot. I mean, you know, his son. Yeah. I mean, think about that. I mean, his son is killed. And yeah. I mean, that's like, okay, you, you're, you're this, this, the screenwriter grabbed you right away. I mean, you're, you're in it now. You, <laughs> you're in the right. movie. You're not going to leave. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a better film, but I'm I'm pretty excited about seeing the old Star Trek. I'll be films. picking I mean, that box set up as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean you got to man, you got to check see what they've done with it. You can't let you know. Well, it's um, one of those that you have to own. Like as a home theater fan, it's like how do I not own that? Like I own yeah. all the I own all the Star Trek movies, and when my buddy John and I reviewed them, I don't think I'd even watched them yet. I had them. Yeah, I owned Imagine them. If, like, <laughs> 
I, I often thought about what if like Stanley, Stanley Kubrick directed the first Star Trek movie, what it would have been like. Well, I think the problem was it wouldn't have been anything like the TV show. Yeah. And that's what they were going for. They were going for the motion picture version of the TV show. I mean, those, and that's what the fans wanted. I know. And those early shows are so like, I mean, they're so low budget. I mean, they were right. literally going to like the thrift stores and finding crap and spray painting it silver. You know, they pick yeah. up these weird things that, on the street and just put it all together and make a set. Yeah. But they had no budget. But look what they did with the no budget. I mean, they, I mean, they started a, a whole, I don't know what you call it. But a, a cult. <laughs> cult following. <laughs> they started a cult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that's, those are the ones that I think that are really, I'm excited about. Um, yeah. A Quiet yeah. Place 2 will be cool, too, to have that. You know, Quiet Place yeah. 2 will be great. That's enough. already out on Paramount+. Plus. And did you see that? Um, I said last week. Um, did you see Paramount Plus is streaming in Atmos? Oh, are they doing it right now? Yeah. Oh, so you can stream a Quiet Place. The only two I found on there that are streaming in Atmos mm -hmm. are a Quiet Place and a Quiet Place Two. Oh, okay. You can see on Paramount Plus in Atmos. Let me see if I got that. Hmm. Yeah, they don't have much in uh. They don't have too much in 4K, but is it is it in 4K? Or no. Is it just Atmos? I didn't. I actually I just haven't Atmos? checked that yet. Yeah, okay. th that I know of. I haven't actually checked to see. I haven't put on. My wife and I are going to watch them, and uh, I haven't actually checked and mm -hmm. to see what it's coming through on my projector yet. But I did check to see if it was streaming in Atmos, and I, as soon as I put it on, my receiver went to Atmos. So nice. I got it's, it, I got it. Yes. That's a good sign that even Paramount Plus is doing Atmos now. So maybe HBO Max will get on the ball and get more Atmos Oops. content going. Oops. So you can get, I mean, obviously you've probably seen Star Trek Discovery and Picard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Those look really nice. I wish those were 4K. Yeah. The Dolby Vision though. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. Like people wonder like, well, how can it be Dolby Vision in HD? <laughs> But. Yeah, that's yeah, that's this yeah, you don't have to have 4K to have that. Um but yeah, I thought Picard was really good. I'm looking forward to season 2 on that. For sure, yeah. All right, man. But all right. That was fun. That was fun and we'll be we'll be back together soon when we do uh Lord of the Rings. We'll do the wrap up of that. And then of course, the end of the year, we'll do our we'll, I don't know. Do we do it in December? Or do we do it at the beginning of January? The best of twenty twenty one. Well, we I can't we remember when we did it last year. November to December because we can't talk about the full year. The December full releases, January. right? Yeah, and right, a few right. titles made right. it through. Um, from well, obviously, remember? I mean, look what came out at the end of the year. I mean, you had Game of Thrones, you had the Hobbit, you had Akira, which right. I really loved. You had quite a few last big year, titles yeah. releasing at the last minute. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true too. Because Christmas is that time, and it's yeah. so. I mean, it's been a good year so far, and uh, yeah, Christmas should be a lot of fun this year as well. Christmas season, getting some more. Uh, hopefully, maybe someday we'll get. Um, what are we talking about here? Uh, ah, True Lies, Dying for True Lies, mm -hmm. and uh, Abyss. Ooh, Abyss. I need Abyss. I need Abyss in four K. Well, you're talking I need James. Abyss on disc. You're, talk <laughs> <laughs> you're talking Abyss, you get a team's camera and you got to talk Avatar also. Yeah, I have a feeling that that won't be coming until the movies start coming out. And mm -hmm. then then we'll get that. When Avatar 2 comes out, they'll mm -hmm. start to release. They'll start releasing that then. They're waiting to uh, tie it all together. Yeah. So. All right. That was great. Thank, Thank you, you again. very much. Thank you again, DJ. It was a lot of fun. I loved your list. Yeah, I love your list. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I've got to go watch these. I'm, like, my wife's going to be like, what? All right. <laughs> She's going to run right by me to the theater before I change my mind. <laughs> You're going to be running around the house singing those songs. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Show tunes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, Jeff. Thanks a lot, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Peace out. 
And that's my conversation with, with Jeff from HD Report. You can find him on Twitter at HD Report or check out his website, as I said before, HD slash report.com. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, HD dash, not slash, HD dash report.com. A uh, lot of great stuff there. And I actually purchased um, um, what was a set, the classical set there, the, uh, uh, I don't even remember what I just bought. I, I, I'm not going to go look it up. But anyways, five movies, Taxi Driver, Stripes. Can't wait for those to come in. Uh, but Jeff, uh, thank you very much for coming on. Always a great time. Again, after we recorded that, because that was pre-recorded to what I'm doing right now. But after we recorded that, we chatted for a little bit longer after the fact. And uh, great guy. Can't wait to have him back on to do the second half of Game of Thrones the, to wrap up. Not Game of Thrones. Uh, Lord of the Rings. And we will do our top, probably top five or ten. for Probably our top five. I think that's what we did last year. Our top five for the year. We'll wrap that up, uh, as we said when we were talking earlier. We'll wrap all that up at the end of the year, maybe in January, late December, something like that. Uh, be able to give uh, enough credit to or be able to view anything that comes out in December. So really looking forward to that. Thanks again, Jeff. And uh, all right, let's get to some comments this week. This week on Twitter, pretty active week. First up, at WV Brew, WV Brew comes in with, at Brightside HT, if you have Amazon Music and want much higher resolution music, it's free to log into, go to Amazon Music, activate Amazon HD, no, ch no upcharge, free upgrade. Also, if you use Apple Music, go to settings, Apple Music, and choose lossless for audio quality. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I I, I want to let everybody else know about it because that's if you're into music and lossless music and higher resolution, I'm not really into music like that. Like I've said before, it's like I love listening to music when I'm doing something. Um, and it's very rare that I want to sit in my theater and watch and or listen, just listen to music. Had a lot of fun and still do. I still have a lot of fun with the uh, with Apple Music and using this, the Atmos sounds and getting some different songs. So if people have different songs that they want me to hear, I'm definitely in for that because because that's a lot of fun. Uh, the way people, artists are moving the sound around the room and stuff, that to me is, that's a fun thing to do in your theater. Um, but actually just going from one resolution to another resolution, unless it's like a tape and it's like really crappy, I really don't mind. I, I'm not really into that higher resolution. And I used to be, I used to look for the best CDs with the highest bit rate and the best quality and the recording and bubble. I used to be into all of that. Um, not so much anymore, really, because it just, I've, I've got so many other things I like to do. And it's just to, to wait, it, like the, the upgrade to me from one to the next to the next is so almost indiscernible at times that I, I really just don't get into that. But I know a lot of people do and people love, people love to have like an ear for that. And they love, or they have an ear for that and they love to hear the differences. And, um, so I thought I'd put that out to everybody. Um, next up, Mark V at Husbu 333. That's H U S B O O O 333. He says at Brightside HT, yo DJ, have you reviewed any of the Bourne series? I only have the 4k disc version of Jason Bourne, but it is it is in DTSX. I do have the 4K streams of the other films. If you like the series, which is your favorite and why? Also, could you review this one? Thanks again. And uh, yes, all of the Bourne series are on the menu to be reviewed. N none of them have been reviewed as of yet. Um, I have them all in 4K. I believe, I'm pretty sure every single one of them is in DTSX. And my favorite, favorite is I, it, I meant to watch this before I recorded this podcast. I was so, I love the born series. Absolutely love the born series. Um, when it comes on TV, I I'll put it on if I'm flipping channels and it's there. Definitely. I go right to it and then I'll probably run right downstairs and finish it from there. Um, about a month or so ago, I was watching, they, I think TNT or somebody ran a born marathon and they, 
they played the first three of them in a row and I got into it. And instead of watching it on that, uh, in the middle of the day, I think I was watching it the second time. I'll tell you which one it was in a second. Cause it is my favorite one. I actually used my Zipidi mini upstairs in the living room to, to, I skipped from watching it on the commercial program well, like TNT or whatever and went right and put it on the Zipidi and completely enjoyed it there on my TV upstairs. And then I got so into that. I'm like, what am I doing? I got to go downstairs. So I went downstairs to the theater, put it on in there and absorbed the DTSX. And absor- I mean, it just, it's one of those things like Shawshank Redemption. You can't, you can't just scan by it. Well, I feel that way with the Bourne series. And that includes the Bourne, what is it, Legacy with Renner. I really like that one too. I, I love them all. I love the story. Uh, Matt Damon, I thought it was so much fun when that first came out. Uh, the first Bourne, um, I can't remember what's the first one. I know my, well, let's get to my favorite one. It's the second one, Bourne Supremacy. I love that one because that's the one where he gets the girl, loses the girl, and then it, I mean, he just goes nuts um, as far as Jason Bourne, who is so calm, so collected. And I just, I love the way that story plays out. And as far as home theater goes, the fight sequences that choreographed so well, the bass in there for the DTSX, the punches, everything I thought sounded really good um, in all of them, to be honest with you. Um, but as far as my favorite one, it, it's definitely Supremacy. Um and uh, two, that was about it, I think, on that one. Next up, Adriano the Nerd at Adriano Tweets 87. In response to my Independence Day podcast last week, he wrote, Greatest movie ever. I was just the right age when the movie came out. It hit me the same way that Star Wars would have hit many kids when they were my age. I was nine when this came out and it made me want to know absolutely everything about how it was made. Um, yeah. And that, yeah, Adriano, you're right. That, I mean, if you're nine years old when that comes out and you want to know everything on how that movie was made, that is what Star Wars did for me, you know? And I, I wanted to know how it, I didn't know I wanted to know that, but then when I got older and I was like, oh, that's cool. That's how they did that. And the models that they use and everything. And it just, it just snowballs and you just want to know so much more. And then here you are, you're into home theater because you found out they did this that way and you want to re-experience it. And yeah, I, I think like Independence Day, it's just such a fun, I I say that all the time. It's like, it's fun because I love Obviously, I love to have fun, but it's, it just is, it really, you just sit down and you just absorb it and you, all of your senses are hit at, at once sometimes. And you just really have a good time just losing yourself for a little bit. And and that's what this is all about. And that's what a popcorn movie is all about. You're supposed to be able to shut your brain off and have fun, you know? So that, you know, glad you enjoyed it. Uh, let's see what's next. Ah, Steve George. He says, I don't own any. So he's replying. Let me step back up for a second. He's replying to somebody who put out a question on Twitter. What is the worst movie you own a physical copy of? And then they said, mine, the last airbender. I've only kept it in case of Shaun of the dead disc throwing opportunity, (laughs) uh, of a, yeah, Shaun of the dead. Okay. So anyway, so Steve George replied, he says, I don't own any, if I don't like the movie, it doesn't go into the collection. The only one I've bought fairly recently that immediately had to be expunged from hashtag cinema George was midway. Sorry, not sorry at Brightside HT. So. (laughs) <laughs> we have our little thing back and forth, Steve George at Legal Beagle. Okay. Uh, we have our little thing back and forth with Midway. He did not like it, does not like it, does not like the way the actor portrayed, uh, um, Dick Best. He doesn't like, I mean, there's, he doesn't like the CGI and I was, you know, I liked it. I loved it. As a matter of fact, I loved exactly what Emmerich did there. I loved the style and Hey, I was backed up by none other than Brent Butterworth. So I, I, I can't get better than that for me. So, um, Steve, you get, you got to get somebody in your corner and, uh, then we'll, then, then maybe it'll be fair. So, but yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We, we don't have to agree on everything. As a matter of fact, we probably don't agree on most things and that's what makes this so much fun. Uh, so 
All right, let's move along quickly here. We have JT at, this one's a riot, at Pink JT. He says, at Brightside HT, great argument for doing it yourself, DJ. And it says, it's an article about an architect that was suspended after designing a 450,000-pound uh, wonky home cinema. So apparently this was in Europe somewhere, and... Basically, I read the article and it's very weird to me because when you're building something and it's like, first off, the thing had to be made out of glass and that was at the request of the builder, of the homeowner, but the homeowner was suing the architect because it was just, they didn't like the way it came out and they thought it was too expensive for what they did. And as a home theater fan, they're a hundred percent right. This thing is an absolute disaster as a home theater fan. I think, I think it's ugly. I think, I mean, there's, I mean, a million things, right? But here's the problem that I have with the fact that the homeowners won. Um, you sign it off on this stuff. You know, you, you're the builder and you're saying, this is what you want. Okay, I'll do it. And then you do it. And then they sue you and go, I didn't like it. And I, I've known build, I have friends that are builders and they've done some weird stuff that they wouldn't recommend. And I know one that actually went to court because they decided, and he did win, he got his money and it's, it, you know, you signing off on this stuff. And it's like, I wrote, I wrote back, I'm like, Hey, buyer beware, you know? And it's like, it, it's, it just, to me, that seems weird, but it's, um, JT actually replied. I, he said, as you say, caveat emptor, looking at the guy's banking career in his house, I think he can probably afford to pay someone else to do another one for him. You could always come over the pond, DJ. And I said, I, I replied to that. I was like, I was thinking the same thing because I would love to solve that problem. Like if you have something that's ugly and you want to make it look good, I love doing that stuff. You redesigning stuff, doing things like that. It's like, I had an art teacher when I was growing up that said, like, there are no mistakes. And this falls right into my bright side thinking, you know, like there are no mistakes. So what you have to do is you have to take a negative and make it a positive in your artwork. Um, comes in very handy when you're working in pen and ink. And I'm talking like literal pen and ink, like you dip the pen in the ink, right? So you're doing this and you make a mistake. There's no erasing that. So you have to know what you're doing and or you have to be able to compensate for the mistakes that you make. And we had an exercise and I've used this with my kids. I said this to them on Twitter that I, I would talk about this a little bit. I've used this with my kids in that, hey, everything happens for a reason. There are no mistakes. You have to roll with the punches, blah, 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 all that. And what you do is you take a piece of paper and you just blindly scribble on the piece of paper and you just make a bunch of scribbles. Look at it for a few seconds and now turn that into a piece of art. Try to envision something in there and draw darken areas, lighten areas, and make that into a decent picture. And it's basically, it's like when you look up at the clouds and you try to picture what you can picture. Oh, I see Mickey Mouse or I see this, but you're doing that. You're making something out of nothing. And there have been many opportunities when my kids were growing up that we did that and they didn't like the way something happened, whether a coach said something to them or a dance instructor said something to my daughter or did something or, or a teacher, they didn't get the grade they wanted. I would, I would literally put out a piece of paper, scribble on it and just slide it over to them and go, go ahead, make something out of a negative. And then they would, they didn't literally have to do it right there, but they got what I was talking about. And that's the idea with this box. It's this box in this house. It's like, you got to make something out of it. You can rip it all down or find somebody creative enough that can turn that into something that you're proud of. And uh, it's hard to do, but I think it can be done. And it, it hey, like I said, buyer beware, lesson learned. But I, I really, I, I, I kind of feel for the architect because I don't think the guy just like, went in and made something out of nothing. And then they came home from a long trip and went, what the hell did you put an ice cube in my house for? So I don't know my two cents on that. And it's a little bit, that's more than like five cents. All right, let's move along. 
we'll move over to some emails. And I got an email from John this past week that's pretty lengthy. Uh, he talks about Apple TV versus Roku. And he found it, it had set up was a little glitchy with his Apple TV 4K. But all in all, once he got it dialed in, he felt like the Apple TV did a better job with Atmos. Roku Ultra had issues with like actually signaling that there was Atmos. Um, it, so he really enjoyed the Apple TV performance was a pleasant surprise. My TV is HDR only with internal apps. However, Apple said my TV was HDR 10 compliant. So I went with it. He said with Roku, I could never get Disney plus in 4k. Disney plus seems to be married to HDR with Apple 4k and HDR 10 is available. Uh, the other thing he was talking about, we went back and forth or he went back and forth with here was Atmos music. And I'm wondering if you, his settings are correct. So John, let me know because you said that your app, uh, the Atmos music that you were listening to has issues. It is much quieter overall. I would think this is because with up mixing, you have all speakers pretty much active all the time. And with actual Atmos material, the mixer has fewer speakers active. Same reason your all channel stereo is so much louder. Atmos music seems less dynamic than a good quality feed from any service. Uh, I don't find that to be true at all. Um, in my experience with Atmos music, and that's music that was made, it, it is in Atmos. It's not up mixed to something else. It's actually the Atmos. And I've only listened to it on Apple, um, on my Apple TV using the Apple music. But the the Apple, the Atmos music, it, you did not lose volume. If anything, you gained it in my room. I, I, I took pictures of my, my, uh, the temperature on my fan and everything that I have the infinity fan that tells me the temperature above my receiver that this thing made my receiver work really hard. Uh, the, the Atmos music, because you're right. All channels in Atmos are running and they're running at a high volume. Whereas I think you're also correct in saying that if you're just using stereo music and you're up mixing it to all your channels, you're basically just doing all channels running. That could be the case, but then that doesn't, there's no separation. You just basically have stereo going through. I used to do that back in the day when I had a party, I put it on like all channels, Stereo, like every channel was playing the same, the left side of the room and the right side of the room. So if you had six speakers, they were all playing the same thing pretty much. And that's not as, there's no, there is no dynamics there or can be less dynamics than Atmos. I thought the dynamics in Atmos were fantastic. The way the sound moved around the room, the, the bass, I mean, it, it, it really, really was, um, I'm wondering if, if maybe I have what you're talking about a little confused or your settings aren't a hundred percent right, but I thought Atmos music was honestly, I thought it was incredible, but yeah, John, let me know on that. And, um, got a little, having a little fun with G Cornell, uh, a little bit, maybe coming in the future. I'm, I'm, I'm up for a new experiment. Uh, I'm going to try something. So there'll be more on that in the future. Uh, but a bunch of emails from Carl as well this week. Uh, you'll hear more about those on HT guys and AV rant. Oh yeah. And speaking of Carl, uh, thank you to Carl because he answered me right away. My request last week on, uh, true romance. He sent me the link to, uh, Zavi in the UK, ordered it up and it's on its way. Uh, I actually, I think it actually might even be here today. As a matter of fact, uh, true, true romance in 4k through Zavi. I did the whole thing and I'm like, I, for some reason, I couldn't get it to work with my Google Chrome. It kept sending me to the US version, but then I did it on my phone in Safari. I used the same link that he sent me, and on my phone in Safari, it, it sent me right to the UK link. I was able to order it up. Um, having it shipped right to the house, I became a member of that. I'm loving it. So thank you, Carl. I really appreciate that. I'm really excited to get that. I'm hearing great things about that movie, uh, the colors and everything. So I can't wait to check that one out. True Romance. I'll be talking about that. I'll, hopefully, if it comes in this week, I'll have a couple of comments on it next week, too. And uh, other than that, I'm 
getting back into going to the theaters. Hope you guys, I know the Delta variants out there, but that's why we have our theaters. That's why we can have so much fun at home and really experience these. And just, uh, it's, hey, do what makes you feel comfortable. Have fun. Thank you to my 14 patrons. Thank you to everybody on Twitter. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com backslash brightside home theater go there or on the website just click on the red button it's a little red button says donate you click on that takes you right to patreon you could set yourself up with a, a monthly donation of a dollar minimum a dollar so it'd be 12 bucks a year um and you can help support the podcast and all of this great stuff that you get here uh if not that's fine. Or you can go to TeePublic. Go to TeePublic.com. Links in the show notes as well. And you can grab a t-shirt, grab a mug, grab a, a coaster. I don't know if they have coasters. Um, you could grab a phone case and use it as a coaster. But lots of great stuff there. Check that out. Um, that's it. That's all my plugs for this week. I hate doing them, but hey, you don't ask, you don't get, right? That's what my son keeps telling me. Um, big news coming next week. Family news. I wanted to tell you this week, but I can't because I can't because I can't. So, but big, big, exciting news in my life coming up. Uh, I'll tell you guys about next week. I'm very excited to tell you about. So have a great week, everybody. Next week, we are going to be talking about Final Countdown. Can't wait. Uh, already watched it. Already started doing my notes on it. Had so much fun with it. Uh, Carl, I, I believe it was Carl that mentioned it to me over the winter. And I ordered it and it came in like a month and a half ago. And I couldn't. My son sat down. My son and I sat down and watched it. We had fun with it. I'm going to have some fun with it next week. So I'll see you next week. I'm going to go have some fun. I'm going to go. I think I'm going to watch Black Widow again. That's, I'm having fun with that one. Push and play, having fun. I suggest you do the same. So until next week, go push play. Hey, Fred. This has been a Hey, Fred production with theme music by Jeff Bernhardt and Throne Vault Productions. And that's my conversation with Jeff. Easy for me to say. Let's start that again.